I'm alive uh -huh. Feeling good, yeah. alright And you can take yeah. my joy Cause the world no. didn't give it to me You can take my joy Cause the world no. didn't give it to me It says, Now the serpent was more crafty than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Indeed, God has said, You shall not eat from any tree of the garden. The woman said to the serpent, From the fruit of the trees of the garden we may eat, but from the fruit of the tree which is in the middle of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat from it or touch it or you will die. And the serpent said to the woman, You will surely not die. For God knows in the day of you eat of it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. And when, when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was desirable to make one wise, she took from its fruit and ate. She gave also her husband with her, and he ate. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. You know, there's something interesting that's going on here. And their eyes were opened. And they knew that they were naked. You know, were they walking around the garden, you know, like this, with the little cane so that they didn't bump into the trees before? No. So how were their eyes opened? Well, their eyes were opened, and they knew that they were naked. You know, before, they were just seeing with their eyes. They weren't knowing with what their eyes see. They were knowing the way that we know it now. We know all things after the Spirit. It says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. That we know the mysteries of God. That we know according to God's knowledge. That in that day, I'll send the Helper and He will lead you into all truth. Guess what? Some of the truth that we know... You can't know with what your eyes see and your ears hear. I mean, how many of you know that you've been crucified with Christ? 2,000 years ago, when Christ died, you died with Him. 2,000 years ago, when Christ came up from the, end, from the tomb and He was raised, you were raised with Him. You don't know that with what your eyes see. Do you understand that? You know after the Spirit of God. Because God sees you in this world through a completely different way of perceiving. He's the Alpha and the Omega, and He's standing outside of time, and He's standing in time, and He sees the beginning from the end, and He speaks about the things that are not as if they are, because to God they are. And all men live unto God. You know, he, he, he says things like that, that. Do you understand that you're right here, right now, but as far as God's concerned, you are seated with Christ in heavenly realms? You don't know that by what your eyes see and your ears hear. And so Adam and Eve are walking in the garden, and they're enjoying seeing with their eyes, but they're knowing the garden, they're knowing themselves, they're knowing one another because they're perceiving from their spirit how God perceives them. And they're seeing that He created us in His image and His likeness just to be clothed with His glory. And is this wonderful? And you're wonderful and I love you. And then the serpent comes in. You ever wonder why on earth did God let put the serpent there? I've always wondered that. But you know, it makes a heck of a lot of sense when you understand in Genesis chapter 2 that God says in, uh, I think it's Genesis 2, 2 or 1. Yeah, Genesis 1 actually. Chapter, uh, chapter 1 verse 26, God says, Let us make man in our image and according to our likeness and let them rule over the earth and over every creeping thing, and over all the earth. So do you understand that at the creation of man, God appointed man as the ruler of the earth. When God created you, He created a ruler. That when people would look at you, they would 
see the rule of God. They would see the dominion of God. You see, God planted a garden. You know the difference between a garden and a jungle or a forest? It's divine. It's order. So God put man in the garden, and He said, "You're my image. You're my likeness. Now rule, subdue the earth, make the whole earth like the garden. Bring my order. But now my order is going to come through your dominion." Satan. You know what? Why angels were one of their job, their appointed role. Angels are ministering servants. They're servants to who? Those that will inherit salvation. So, what I believe, God created rulers. God said angels serve them. Be ministering servants. Satan says, no way am I serving them. I deserve to be worshipped. God says, that's rebellion out of heaven. But you know what? There's one place in the in the in the created order now that God's given man, God's appointed someone else. There's a there's a delegated authority. So God took care of Satan in heaven, but he threw him down to earth. Because guess who's gotta do the job on the earth? Man. Man. So he throws him down on the earth in the form of what? A creeping thing. Why? Because man had dominion over every creeping thing over all the earth. And so here comes this creep into the garden saying, did God say this? And say, look with your eyes. Reason in your own mind. And men, human beings became captive to their physical experience, their physical perceptions and their own reasoning deduction about what seems right to a man. And guess what? It's just death. Well, if, gee, if God's already said they're healed, then why wasn't Aunt so, and so and so? And, well, it seems this way. The, the, it looks like our experience, and then it seemed, and then we contradict the word of God with it. And, right? We do that. Well, I know what God's word says, but <laughs> I know Jesus healed them all, but okay, you know what? <coughs> Are you gonna are you gonna cancel out the word of God with your experience, or are you gonna continue to believe the word of God until your experience manifests what the word says? Sometimes you know you just things happen they don't match the word of God, and you just say, I don't know why why we missed that thing, but. One thing I do know, I forget what lies behind. I reach forward to what lies ahead. I lay hold of that which, for which I was taken hold of. Why were you taken hold of by Jesus Christ? To manifest Him, to manifest the kingdom of heaven on the earth, to demonstrate what the will of God is on the earth, to prove the will of God, that which is good, that which is acceptable, that which is perfect, right? I believe that the will of God is good, acceptable, low, and perfect. Prove it. I believe it's God's will that all be healed. Prove it. I believe it's God's will that all be saved. Prove it. Well, you don't prove it until your mind's renewed. It's our minds that get in the way of, the, of God's will being manifest in every area of our life. And when our minds are renewed to the Word of God, meaning the living Lord Jesus as He stands forth in this in the Word, especially, then God's free to accomplish and manifest His will through us. But oftentimes what we have to do is we have to forget what lies behind. We have to say, you know, listen, this thing going on in my body doesn't tell me the truth about me. It doesn't tell me the truth about God. It doesn't tell me anything except a fact. 
Do you know God looked at Abraham in, in Romans chapter 4? And he looked at Abraham and said, you're the father of many nations. And Abraham looked at his body and said, I'm an old man, almost dead. And he looked at his wife and he's like, ooh, is he much better? <laughs> She's almost dead too. But he didn't grow weak in faith as he contemplated the facts that were going on in his body and his wife's body. He grew strong in faith, giving glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to accomplish what He had promised. Do you understand that oftentimes, you know what? When I told you that when, when God revealed this to me, that there were some people in, in the small group that I was a part of that met regularly in our home that had been battling with, with health issues. And I just humbled myself and said, listen, I've been offering you far less than Jesus Christ offers you, and I just need to repent. I just need to tell you that I really believe that Jesus wants you healed, and I've not been praying for you, and nobody else has because you've been following my lead, and I just need to tell you that, listen, you guys don't have to believe like what I believe, um, but here's what I believe. I believe Jesus wants you healed. Why? Because Jesus healed them all. <laughs> And he lives in us. And so I'm just going to go for this. I'll just tell you, I'm going to stand with you until you receive what Jesus has purchased for you. And not only you, but any one of you in this room and any one of your families or friends, day or night, my life is laid down. So, you know, and I began to lay hands on her when we would meet together. And she would experience change in her symptoms sometimes. And then... You know, she had a bone spur in her knee. Well, that left. I like dissolving bone spurs. You know, my hobby is now freaking doctors out. That's what I like to do. I like to see metal disappear. I like to see organs recreated. I like to see cancer that was head to toe all through the organs and the bones and the bodies. You know, next visit, it's all gone. And they told them, don't come back anymore. Don't waste your money. Just go die somewhere. And they're saying, I'm back. And I want you to do that whole scan thing because I'm feeling really good. And the doctor's going, blah, 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 blah. you know, I like that. That's my hobby. <laughs> because they're smarter than I am. But Jesus is Lord. And he loves us. You know, I wish I could say that every time I've laid hands on somebody with cancer, it's 100% and you just get those results. But I need to let you know. There's people that I've laid hands on. We still haven't seen the result. I haven't stopped yet. We're not done yet. Okay? There's a, um, this lady who was in our home group with chronic fatigue syndrome and fibromyalgia. She had the bone spur. The bone spur left. And sometimes we'd lay hands on her and she'd feel like, no, I feel, some, I feel better. Okay? Well, let us know. You know, just two and a half months ago, she said, I've not had a symptom in four weeks. That's after two years of consistently laying hands on Why did it take so long? <laughs> I don't know. But I'll tell you, it wasn't because of God. It was because it was taking us that long to get on page with Him and to be renewed in our mind and uh, for us to get out of the way. How do I know that? Listen, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, <clears throat> verse 2. Now is the time of salvation. Today is the day of salvation. You know, it's God's not up in heaven saying, you know, when's my time? We know what his time is. It's wonderful. He said, today, now. Those are God words. God is, I am God. You know, and, and the most, if you listen, around Christendom and listen to sermons and things like that. A lot of people believe in the power of God, but they preach, I, instead of preaching, I am, they preach, I was. Or they believe in the power of God and they talk about the need for it and they talk about this great move that's coming and they preach about God who will be powerful. God who will in the future, one day, when the anointing comes, when the revival comes, when the full manifestation comes, when the, you know, when it's, it's out there somewhere in the distance, you know, 
It's out there. Or it was there. Instead of, you know, God is I am. The same God that we read in this Bible. This Bible points us to a living experience now with that God. Jesus is the I am. He is the Lord. He is the Alpha and the Omega. And that's good news. So there's probably some of us here who have had experience and it's been confusing. Maybe the whole church was praying for Sister So and So and she died. Or Brother So and So, he died. You know? Can I just explain to you something that might help? If Jesus had walked into that prayer meeting, Sister So-and-So would not have died. Brother So-and-So would not have died. Can we amen that one? All right. So let's not sell God short. And let's not build an argument in our minds of trying to lean on our own understanding. I don't understand. Okay, don't go there. Don't try to lean on that thing. That thing is what the devil used to get us dead and out of the kingdom of God. He brought us out of the garden and into death through that thing. And we were born captive to our experience and our rationalizing about our experience. And then all of a sudden in Jesus, we saw the heavens manifest. He was the light of the world. He was showing us things that eye has not seen and ear has not heard. And we saw in Him His life and in light. And the light, the light of Jesus is the light of men. And when we put our faith in Him, we're born again and the lights come on. And all of a sudden, we in our innards become connected with God's innards. And they're outside of time and space. And, and we begin to all of a sudden know that we know that we know. Well, and then we got all these atheists and arguments trying to get, well, how do you know? Well, you know, I put my faith in it. It just happens. You know, I just, I don't know. You can't tell me different. Because we know as we're supposed to know. Not with our eyes are open and we knew. Adam, for the first time, looked at Eve and just... What you see is what you get. It's like, you're naked. And Eve looks at Adam and says, you're naked. And we, you know, and it's uncomfortable to just be seen, known after the flesh. What have you done for me lately? Are you talented? Are you smart? Are you pretty? Are you attractive? Are you old? Are you this? Are you that? We define one another according to our experience of one another, our experience of ourselves. And this is, this is, well... I'll know that God heals when I experience it. Or I'll believe that God loves me when my life isn't so complicated and difficult. And if God really loved me, why did He put me in the home that He put me in? Or the many homes that He put me in? And you know what? God is saying in Jesus, look, get it settled once and for all. God has demonstrated His love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Get it settled. Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is Savior. God loves you. He gave Himself on the cross to take away your sins. But before He did that, He went to the whipping post to take away your sickness. Get it settled. It's in the Word. It's in Jesus. It's not some little verses. It's clear. Start to finish, Jesus healed them all. And He gave Himself for us all. And He rose again because He was victorious in what He gave Himself for. And so God, who did not spare His only Son... How will He not also with Him freely give us all things? If Jesus went through such a price to pay for it, don't you think God is eager to give us what He paid for? If He went to the whipping post to pay for your healing, don't you think that God is eager to give you what He paid for? I don't go to the store and buy my Christmas gifts so that I can keep them and never give them to them. 
I am so eager to give to my children what I pay for. Ladies and gentlemen, he not only paid for your salvation, for, for your salvation from sin, but your salvation from all evil. Sin, guilt, sickness, disease, it's all the work of darkness. Acts chapter 10, verse 38, you know Jesus of Nazareth. He was filled with the Holy Spirit and power. And he went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed by God, by the devil, because God was with him. Read it, Acts chapter 10, verse 38. You know Jesus of Nazareth, how he went about, he was filled with the Holy Spirit and power, went about doing good, healing some who were oppressed by the devil. No, healing all who were oppressed by who? The devil. Because God was with him. Is God with us? Yes, he is. That's the good news. That in Jesus Christ, God has removed the barrier. He's justified us. He's put us back into that original position. What he created us for. To walk in unity with him. To see, not with eyes. and not To, to not know with our eyes and with our own reasoning. But to know according to his word. According to his spirit. To walk and to exercise the dominion of man underneath the authority of God so that where we go, we bring the manifestation of the divine order of God wherever we go. And instead of letting serpents crawl around in our gardens, we take up serpents. See, that's the gospel that the apostles preached. That in those who believe your gospel, in my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will take up serpents. If they drink any deadly poison, it will not harm them. And they will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. That's the gospel that the apostles preached. And he said, those that believe that gospel, they'll do it. They'll do it. That's the gospel that I'm preaching to you. That's the gospel that I believe. And that's, the, that's what I'm excited about. That this is a gospel that's good news for you. That when you believe that that's what you're going to walk in. Is that good news? Okay. So, we're going to wrap her up here tonight. I want to um, encourage you. We'll be here. We'll get started at 9 o'clock in the morning. Uh, then we're going to take shoot for a lunch break right around noon for about an hour and a half or so. And, uh, and then we're going to uh, go uh, for the afternoon. So it's going to be a good day. Um, I appreciate it. I know you've already put in a long week, so go home and get a good night's rest. If there's anybody that would like prayer, um, I'm going to be up front. I'm happy to pray for anybody tonight. And uh, I look forward to seeing you guys back here in the morning. So God bless. Yeah, I'm alive. Uh -huh. Feeling good, yeah. alright And you can take my joy Cause the world didn't no. give it to me You can take my joy Cause the world didn't no. give it to me